Hey everybody, what's up? Gary Simon here. So large sites, I'm talking sites that are perhaps number one traffic website in the world, number two, number three even, are screwing up and making really common UX mistakes on their sites in different areas. So what I'm gonna do is take a look probably at like 15 or so examples of really large sites within the top 100 that I was able to quickly just you know browse through and I, I basically put together a slide of all the UX mistakes that I've seen and that way you guys can really just learn from the fact that hey even the biggest sites in the world are still committing some certain you know fundamental uh, no-nos when it comes to UX. So as always, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. Before we begin, this video is sponsored by Linode. Now as a front-end developer or a designer, you know that you need a personal portfolio. And if you use a website builder like Wix or Squarespace, they lack total customization and they lock you into using their platform. But to be a pro, you need to use the tools that the pros actually use. So level up, start building your own projects and your own portfolio on an enterprise level content management system like WordPress or Drupal. Now, real web development sometimes requires knowledge of spinning up servers, managing domain names, and setting up an occasional staging environment. And there's no better or simpler way to learn the ins and outs of hosting your website than with Linode Cloud Hosting. Linode Cloud Hosting makes it as easy as possible for you to deploy a WordPress or Drupal website in seconds with a free Linode one-click app marketplace. So click on the very top link here in the YouTube description to get your free Linode account along with $20 of free hosting and all the tools that you need to build enterprise class websites. All right, so the very first example is actually what spurred the idea for this video here. And it's because I ordered something and it was being tracked or sent via USPS. So I went to Google and I typed in USPS tracking and they have the nice little you know, embedded little widget where you can just enter the tracking number. Now the problem here is you're not exactly sure right off the bat where I should be clicking in order to enter that field. Now this is on Android, all right? So if you visit this uh, like in your browser on the desktop or maybe even on Apple or iOS, uh, you may see an actual outline where you're supposed to enter. Uh, but a few times when I visited, just because I was checking up on my package, I did actually click on track package because I wasn't sure where I should be clicking. So when you actually focus into it, you could see, ah, there it is. It's it's outlined right here. This is where you're supposed to be tracking. So this is a UX no-no. You should always at least outline or have a discernible background color on your form elements, uh, like your text fields. Uh, that way people know, hey, that's exactly where it is. That's where I need to be clicking. Next up, Facebook. So Facebook was doing basically one of the number one no-nos when it comes to uh, you know, form elements, and that is using the placeholder value without any other label. These aren't even floating labels. So what happens if you start entering your email and then maybe you have to come back or maybe you have some type of memory issue you forget what the field is because otherwise what you'll have to do is you have to delete all the way back and then it'll say email the placeholder value will come back so i can't believe you know on facebook's main you know uh, landing page when a user isn't logged in they're only relying on placeholder values uh that's kind of crazy to me now next up wikipedia now this time they're using placeholder values also they're using labels now that's a lot better but just look how cluttered this is i think the placeholder values right here are a little bit redundant because people know enter a username by default so it's it's a little bit redundant and in terms of the ui and the visual clutter it's a big distraction um and even down here uh there's not a lot of white space separating this little block of content with the captcha. So I think doing something like this would greatly improve uh, the user, their overall user, overall user experience if I can talk. And also with that, probably more signups. Um, there's gonna be a few people that perhaps look like that, look at this and they say, oh, I'm bombarded with so much content, screw this, right? So uh, that's definitely an improvement in that regard, at least in my opinion. If you disagree, you can let me know. And then right here we have Twitter. All right, so this time Twitter kind of has these embedded floating little labels here and that's fine. But this is kind of a little bit nitpicky, but when it comes to just relying primarily on or solely on 
underlying, underlining your text fields or your form elements, that's a UX no-no. And the reason being some people may think that's just like a, a line separator or a border. They're not exactly sure where they should be clicking. Uh, in this case, they do have a background on the form element. <clears throat> I have to clear my throat. Uh, but it's so, there's so much uh, less contrast. Like it's so light that you can barely distinguish it. And some people with, you know, eye issues won't be able to distinguish this light of a background color. Um, so I think it would be fine if they stuck with this underline, but also made this a bit darker right here as well. All right, so this sort of here is Amazon.com, kind of just on one of the product listing pages, and there's a video section. Um, this is just uh, a little bit nitpicky. It, it's a little bit redundant here. We have videos here, and then we have embedded uh, and indented, which kind of throws off the flow of this column and the layout, videos for this product. product. So I uh, just, it was, it was real annoying to me when you have two labels unnecessarily like this. I'm sure that's not their intention. It may have some sort of widget embedded or something, um, but this right here is clearly better than this one. All right, so next up, we have WhatsApp. All right, this is kind of an annoying thing for me. We can see where it says data charges may apply. <laughs> Maybe you can see it, I'm not sure. Uh, contact your provider for details. So these are like these little uh, disclaimers now, if you're gonna, if you're putting text and if you're putting disclaimers, I mean, they're probably meant to be seen, right? So here it is like zoomed up a little bit more. It's still hard to see. And so what we have here is not enough contrast. So you wanna go, you wanna shoot for 4.5 to one color contrast, um, which according to the WCAG 2.0 is enough contrast um, or is the minimum contrast. So this is nowhere near it. This is probably something like 1.5 to one. Um, so really what this would look like if it were improved to minimum, it would look something like this. So this is actually darker than what they had. So this doesn't even look that good without first probably wanting to change this to probably to black and um, probably bolding this up and that way we have a better visual hierarchy. So uh, there's a lot of ways to approach this, but. I'm telling you right now, this is not a good way of doing it. It's just such a bother to me. Next up, Twitter, what are you doing over here? I thought it'd be funny just to include this one. We all know it's wrong. I can't believe that that's an actual thing. I know I didn't screw with the, the HTML or CSS and Dev Inspector. This is actually on their site. All right, and here's an, one of those examples where they have zero background, but they have just a simple underline. Don't want to do that either. AccuWeather, another huge website. I cannot believe this. I cannot believe this when I saw this because embedding text into images and making them PNGs or JPEGs or GIFs is something we used to do back in the late 90s, in the very early 2000s. Uh, this right here, this text, smartphones, download the weather app you can trust. I checked it in the dev inspector because it looked pixelated. Yes, it is actually text that is a part of the image and that's a major no when it comes to web development, front end development. If there's text, make it as a part of the actual HTML and CSS. I, sometimes you can't control that like if you're dealing with uh, banners that are coming from an external external source source but that's not the case here so definite no no um, Pinterest so what do they have going on here another example this these this example here is not a floating label so once you click in it it goes away all right this one right here has nothing to do with forms elements but this right here this line of this type, this line of type, this line of type, this line of type, this one, and this one. There's not a lot of separation. So when I look at this, it, it's a little bit overwhelming. You're not sure where to look. There's just a uh, line after line after line with not a lot of white space. So this would be one such approach that would definitely fix the issue. So if you look over here, compared to here, it's just a little bit better. I've kind of created a little brief container around this area, pushed it down, pushed it down this section from here a little bit and here as well. And it's just 
flows so much better. So when you have a lot of uh, type like this, it's it's important to be able to structure them out um, and, and, and really pay attention to establishing that visual hierarchy and minding your white space. Duck, duck, go. All right, so this is another example of a lot of text occurring. So tired of being tracked online, we can help. And then we have these two, which are real close together. So I made a slight change right here. I'll go back and forth so you can see what I'm doing. And you can see it's just easier to read. Um, I probably could have taken this line and pushed it right here and had more white space above it. Uh, but nonetheless, this is all just kind of clumped together a little bit too much and it makes it hard to read all that type. All right, so this is from Samsung's website. Just look at this middle section for each of these price panels or these price columns. That is just an insane amount of, uh, of, of text without having hardly any, any separation in terms of white space between each one of these. I simply didn't have enough time to even try to fix this because there's so much content here. Um, but really, when you're faced with this type of issue, it's you know you think to yourself, well, what pieces of content should be grouped together? All right, and once you have those groupings and they make sense, then separate them out, each one of those, with white space, uh, because right here this is just not working at all. They're all clumped together. And you you could just make a, a million times it will look so much better uh, if you mine the white space all right hopefully you learned something there and hope you enjoyed that and the takeaway of course is you know even the the best websites or the biggest sites that have all these resources make mistakes and if you disagree with anything that i said and you perhaps think that there's a reason they did x y or z let me know in the comments make sure to subscribe and i'll see you soon goodbye